Here's a drink for you Rudolph Valentino fans, the blood and sand. Welcome to the Cocktail Spirit from Small Screen Network. I'm your host, Robert Hess. In 1922, Rudolph Valentino starred in the movie Blood and Sand. He died in 1926, and right before he died, he mentioned to people that Blood and Sand was his favorite part in the movie he wanted to be known for. We don't know when the cocktail Blood and Sand was first invented. I found it, found it in the Savoy Cocktail Book, and I think that's the earliest known version in print. Uh, so it would have been made sometime between 1922 and 1930. Um, I suspect closer to 1923. Uh, I think it's a great drink if it's done just right. The recipe in the Savoy Cocktail Book called for equal parts of the ingredients, which I don't think quite does justice to what the ingredients are and celebrating the spirit. Uh, so instead, I'm going to take and modify it slightly. And this is actually the recipe you'll find in a lot of bars these days because they too felt the equal parts version didn't work very well. We're going to start off with an ounce and a half of blended scotch. Uh, you can try using single malt scotch if you want to, and the scotches have a lot of variety in their flavor aspect. Even some of the blendeds have more oomph to them than others. Uh, so if you don't like one particular scotch in your drink, try another one to see what you think from there. Is that one and a half ounces? There's one. And a half. And now we're going to use three quarters of an ounce of all the other ingredients. Um, sweet vermouth. Cherry herring. Now in some recipes you'll see it called just for cherry brandy or something like that. Um, we believe that cherry herring is what was commonly used. Uh, but you'll see other products used as well sometimes. One interesting thing, if you uh, go to the, uh, the Tiki Thai down in L.A., uh, they'll make their blood and sand not with scotch, but with tequila instead. And then three quarters of an ounce of fresh squeezed orange juice. I'm going to shake this with ice. Strain it into a cocktail glass. Now the garnish called for this. Um, they say a cherry or an orange or both. Um, since the drink is rather cloudy, uh, the cherry I feel is just going to disappear. But with a nice carefully cut orange twist, you can get that over across the top. Plus, I think the orange oils will add a nice counterpoint to the orange juice uh, that we've added to it already. Now I spin this around my stir rod to have a nice tight spiral to it. Then we have the blood and orange cocktail. And definitely cutting the orange over top of the drink. The orange oils are sitting on top and they're adding nice aroma to it. Plus the orange juice is coming through as well somewhat. But um, other than those nice crisp clean flavors, it doesn't have an awful lot of aroma coming to it. I mean the, the scotch is going to have maybe a slight, slight peaty flavor. Definitely the, the scotch needed to have that extra oomph of adding to it. Otherwise, the sweet vermouth and the cherry herring would have overpowered it too much. Right now, I'm getting the sweetness from those two ingredients. And the smokiness from the scotch is kind of sitting there and almost in the background kind of holding both of those up, making this drink a lot better than it would have been otherwise. And there we have the blood and sand. Mm -hmm.